Yes, wonderful. sir. Wonderful. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, let's start our class. Yesterday, you remember yesterday we discussed about uh, algebraic expressions, uh, algebraic equations. Uh, we, we did solving simultaneous equations. And then we also did uh, proportion ratios and proportions, uh, ratios and proportions. You remember? So today what we're going to do is we are going to do function notations. You see, you see, function. You you you'll do about function notations, inverse functions, and then composite functions. Is all to do with functions topic. And then we'll go to trigonometry. Okay, we'll study Pythagorean theorem, trigonometry, sine and cosine rules. Okay. Now, before we go there, uh, when it comes to functions, okay, when it comes to functions, for example, if you have f of x is equal to 2x plus 3, okay? If you have f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 uh, and, and g of x is equal to 3x minus 5. Uh, see, uh, we'll, we'll, use, uh, we'll use these two questions and we'll try to learn the entire uh, functions. You see, look here. Now, if you have to find f of 1, f of 1 is replacing 1 in the place of x okay replacing 1 in the place of x in this machine uh, in this uh, in this expression so it is 2 times 1 plus 3 so that is 2 plus 3 that is 5 right f of negative 2 would be 2 times negative 2 plus 3 so that is minus 4 plus 3 which is minus 1 negative 1 is this clear okay Yes. Is this clear, guys? Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Good. Now, good. Good. Uh, I mean, I, I, I want you guys to respond. Okay. Otherwise, it will be uh, like a one man, uh, I mean, one side speaking and another side just listening. But next, now, now I want you all to find g of one over uh, negative one over three. Can you do that? G of negative one over three. If you're done, you can give your answer. Negative six. Negative six. Nice. Okay. Is she correct? Negative yes. one over three times yes, yes, yes. five. Yes. yes. So you have three and three cancel. So minus one minus five is negative six. Now, let's go to the compound uh, compound uh, uh, functions. F of uh, F G of Three. Can you see now? Let me explain you how to do this. Have g of three is first. You find uh, uh, g of three. Okay. Uh, let me erase this. First, let's find g of three. G of three is uh, g of three is g of three is equal to you substitute three in place of x here. So three times three is nine minus five, which is four. So now f g of three is f of g of three is four, right? So you you place four f of four. F of four would be two times 4 plus 3. So that is 2 times 8. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 3, which is 11. Right? Am I correct, guys? Yes. Yes, you're correct, okay. sir. Yeah. Yes, wonderful. I want you to find g f of uh, 1 over negative 1 over 2. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Can you try that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you try that all of you? G f of negative one over two. Is it is it one? Yeah, I've also okay. got one. Okay, wonderful idea. It's one. Wonderful, Rahul. Others, others. One. One. Okay. Good, Arun. Yeah, got the same. Wonderful, Nishan. Okay, let's do it. F of negative 1 over 2 first. Let's find F of negative 1 over 2. It is 2 times negative 1 over 2 plus 3. So that is negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. So G of 2 is 3 times 2 minus 5, which is 6 minus 5, which is equal to 1. Right? Now, uh, good. That's correct. Now, one. Let's do uh, inverse functions. Okay. How how to do how do you do inverse functions? Okay. Let me show you. Okay. Just a minute. 
Now, how do we do inverse functions? Okay. Now, for example, you have f of x equal to 2x plus 3. Look here. You have f of x equal to 2x plus 3. To do inverse functions, all of you remember this. f of x is equal to y. Okay. So, what you do is you replace f of x with y. y is equal to 2x minus 3. So, now solve this equation for x. So, y plus 3 is equal to 2x, right? So, x equal to y plus 3 over 2. So now you assume f of x is equal to y. Okay, assume f of x equal to y. You assume f of x equal to y. So x is x equal to f inverse of y, right? So since f of x equal to y implies x is equal to f inverse of y. So in place of x, let's put f inverse of y. So f inverse of y is y plus 3 over 2. Now f inverse of x would be f inverse of x would be in place of y put x. So it is x plus 3 over 2, right? Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. So that's how you find inverse no, of a sir. function, okay? Inverse functions, sir. okay? Yes? Sir. Is that? Go ahead. Um, you put f of inverse y is equal to y plus 3 over 2. So how come f of x is equal to y? I like, assumed it. I assumed f of x to be equal to y. Okay, so if f is equals to y, then x should be equals to f inverse y. Yes. Right. So you so if you put so if you put so would it become f of x? So f, so would you put f um inverse y is equals to then let's say what's it called y plus three over two. See, I mean, I, I'm I'm not understanding what you said. I'm assuming f of x equal to y. So if I assume f of x equal to y, uh, it, it implies that x is f inverse of y. So I replaced f of x with y and I solve the equation for x. So if f of x is y, x is f inverse of y. So therefore, in place of x, I'm, I'm replacing it with f inverse of y. Okay, okay. Sorry, I just, sorry. sorry. Yeah, no issues, no issues. It's good to ask questions. Wonderful, no, no problem at all. Now I want you... Uh, uh, to do this, g of x is equal to, okay, now the, uh, okay, just a minute. Okay, you have this, g of x is equal to x plus 3 over 4. I want you to find g inverse of 5. Can you do that, all of you? Can you try that? Done. Good, Jacob. Finish. Good, Rahul. What about you, Nathan? I'm almost done. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Done. Wonderful, wonderful. Om Patel, can you explain it? Please. Yes, I will. We will do it. Yes. Now, uh, again, uh, look here. Let's do it together. Uh, see, you have, uh, let, let's assume, okay? I mean, I'm, I'm writing here, assume f of x equal to y, okay? So, uh, or else, g, sorry, g of x here, it is g of x, okay? g of x equal to y. So, you have y is equal to x plus 3 over 4, right? Now, let's solve, solve this equation for x. Solve it for x. Okay, we are solving this equation for x, so you get 4y is equal to x plus 3. Is the step clear? Is it clear till here? Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. So now, 4, x equal to 4y minus 3, right? Now, yeah. see, if, g, if g of x equal to y, so x is equal to g inverse of y, right? G goes to the other side, becomes G inverse, okay? G inverse of Y. So you have G inverse of Y is equal to 4Y minus 3. See, I'm not asking you to find G inverse of X here. I'm asking you to find G inverse of 5. So G inverse of 5 would be in place of, in place of Y place 5. So 4 times 5 minus 3, which is 20 minus 3, which is equal to 17. Did you get the same answer, all of you? Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Yeah. Alex, what yeah. do you yeah. think, Alex? Alex? Okay. Now, uh, I want you to do one more, okay? Uh, one more question and then we'll go oh, to... Oh, question. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Um, how did you get... Where, where did you get the wife from? Where did you get the wife from? Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming it. Again, I'm say, I said you can assume whatever you want. If, if maybe okay. A, B, C, D. I'm assuming okay. G of X is Y. Okay, okay, okay sorry. Yeah, yeah, good. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Good, thank you, no problem. Now, let's do one more question, okay? Uh, H of X is equal to 3X minus 4 divided by 2X minus 3. Okay? Uh, this is 2X minus 3. Okay? Uh, oh, let me erase this and try it properly. Okay. It is 2X minus 3. Find H inverse of X. Can you do that, all of you? H inverse of X. Joel, I want you to explain us this. Joel, are you here, Joel? Alex, Umaira? Uh, still working on it. Wonderful, Umaira, no problem. I'm just checking, okay? Good. Zunaira? Ashna, are you working on this, Ashna? Yes. Good, good. Oliver? Wonderful, Oliver. Done? Done. Wonderful. Good, Nashan. Mahmoud, good. Done. Good. Hello. Okay, let's do it together. Now, assume, understand this, I'm writing this. Assume, okay? Assume H of X is equal to Y. Okay? So, you have Y is equal to 3X minus 4 divided by 2X minus 3. Now, solve this for X, okay? Solve for X, okay? So let's take this 2x minus 3 here. So you have y times 2x minus 3 is equal to 3x minus 4. So 2xy minus 3y is equal to 3x minus 4. So I'm trying to bring all x to one side because I have to solve it for x. So 2xy minus 3x is equal to 3y minus 4. Right? Is it correct, guys? Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, X, I'm yes. taking X outside. So X times 2Y minus 3 is equal to 3Y minus 4. Right? So X equal to 3Y minus 4 divided by 2Y minus 3. Yeah. Right? So now, since you assume therefore H of X equal to Y, X is equal to H inverse of Y. Right? This is inverse function of Y. So H inverse of Y is 3Y minus 4 divided by 2Y minus 3, right? Now I want H inverse of X, okay? I, I don't want H inverse of Y. I want H inverse of X. So you need to replace Y with X. So you get, uh, you get, two, uh, you get 3Y, uh, I mean, sorry, you get, you understand all of you? You get 3X minus 4 divided by, 2x minus 3, right? Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Is it, does yeah. it make sense to everyone? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Excellent. Wait, sir. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, when you had 2xy minus 3y equals 3x minus 4, how did you change the y in the axis? Uh, uh, can you repeat that, Jacob, once again? No, it's Ishan. Uh, Ishan, yeah, go ahead, Ishan. Um, I don't get when when you like when you change the y and the x and you swap them over. Mm -hmm. 
Like how, um, how did you do that? Okay, look here, I assumed h of x equal to y, and then I have y is equal to 3x minus 4 over 2x minus 3. Uh, so this is literally y minus 1, y over 1, right? When you have y, it is y over 1. So I'm multiplying this by this, okay? So you have y times 2x minus 3 is equal to 1 times 3x minus 4, right? So 2xy minus 3y is equal to 1 times 3x is 3x minus 1 times 4 is 4. So 2xy minus 3y yeah. is equal to 3x minus 4. And then I'm bringing this 3x to the side and taking this 3y to the other side. So 2xy minus 3x equal to 3y minus 4. Right? Oh, okay. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, does it make sense to everyone, uh, others? How about you, Aral? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, wonderful. What about you, Linda? Uh, yes. Wonderful, Linda. Good. Nathan? Yes, I understand. Wonderful, Nathan. Good. Okay, wonderful. Let's go to uh, some of the questions. Uh, I mean, you'll have easy questions now that, I mean, it is the entire revision of the entire functions. Now, yes, yes. Sorry, so you whenever they ask this question, should we just put so you know when they ask the inverse can we not just since we're going to get the same thing can we not just swap the x and y around without having to do all this algebra no uh, because for this one you have a fraction like this so you're just swapping it but what about the previous one you see here yeah it is okay, not okay. just the it's not just the swapping around right yeah yeah okay so would it only work in the scenario of fractions uh, maybe I'm not sure. Maybe it may work. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Even I mean, okay. I I just I I noted this only when you asked this question. So maybe maybe you, if you can try with two or three more fractions and then come to the conclusion, that'll be good. Okay. okay then. Yeah. Maybe try with another two or three fractions like this, and then come to the conclusion. Okay. Okay. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Good. Good observation, Naomi. Next question, guys. Here is uh, here is a question. Here is a function machine. Uh, you have an input uh, and you have an output. Find the output when the input is negative five. It's very, it's very easy. Go ahead. Let's do it fast. Four. Find the Done. output when the input is five, minus five. So Done. yes, Done. it is minus five. Um, Go ahead. Done. Negative four. Negative four. Minus five times 30, three is minus 15. Minus 15 plus 11 is negative four. Good. Find the input when the output is 44. The answer would be doing reverse. 11. 11. 44 minus 11. 33. 33 divided by 3 is 11. Good. 11. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's go to the next question. Complete the function machine so that x y, y is equal to x over 5 plus 12. Can you do that? So do you just put divided by 5 and then minus 12? Okay. So complete the function machine. So, so it is my it is divide by five here and then minus 12, right? And this is y, right? Yeah, here is a different function machine. You have input plus 15 times two is output. A number x is put into this function machine. The output is 3x. So what is the, x is the input and the output is 3x. So what find the value of x? So you see, uh, you can do this way. X plus 15 Done. times 2 uh, is equal to 3X, right? That's the equation. Yeah. So you have 2X plus 30 is equal to 3X. So 3X plus 2X goes to that side. 30 is equal to 3X minus 2X. So X so X is equal to 30. Is it correct? Am I correct, guys? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Everyone, am I correct? I mean, maybe I might do wrong. Uh, let me know if you're correct or wrong. Let me since I'm doing it on Abdul Lahi, Ahmed, am I correct or wrong? You're correct. Wonderful. Thank you. Good. Now that you guys said I'm correct, let's go to the next question. Can I correct the circle, the correct expression for f inverse of x. Now, what is y here? f of x is, see, f of x equal to x 8x plus 20 right now find the inverse of this function Compl uh, circle the correct expression for f inverse of x 
Done. Done. What is answer? Um, x minus x 20, minus 20 over, over 8. X minus, is, is this one? No. The other no, one. X, the, the, the one, last one. The rightmost one. Yes, correct. So you have, uh, we already did this, okay? You have x of x equal to x, 8x plus 20. So you have y is equal to 8x plus 20, you see? y minus 20 is equal to 8, y plus, y, oh, sorry, y, y minus 20 over 8 is equal to x. So x minus 20 over 8 is equal to f inverse of x, right? So good. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, next question. Let's go to the next question. Okay, if f is a function such that f of x equal to x cube or 2 minus x, find f of minus 2 and f of f of 1. Can you do that? You have two minutes. Done? Yes. What is your answer? Yeah, what is your answer for f of minus two? My answer uh, is minus two. Minus two. Yeah, negative minus two. two. Okay, is Rahul correct, guys? Is Rahul correct? Yes. It's negative yeah. two, yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Good. For those who have yeah. not done, f of minus two would be uh, see minus two whole cube divided by two minus of minus two, right? So that is minus eight over four which is minus two, correct? Next, what is your answer? Uh, let me ask, don't give your answer. Let me ask someone. Uh, let me ask Daniel. Today, Daniel has not responded. Daniel, what is your answer for f of f of one? I got one. One. Is he correct, guys? Is Daniel correct? Yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. yes but can you please explain it, because I know he's correct. Okay, I'll explain it for you. It is, uh, see, you have f of f of one, right? So let's find f of one first. Let's find f of one first. What is f of one? f of one is one cube divided by two minus one. So that is one by one over two minus one is one. So it is one, right? So f of one is one. So f of one is one. So you'll find f of one. Is f of one, you already found it is one, right? So your answer is one. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good, guys. Let's go to the next question. Here we go. Oh, okay. You, you, you're you coming to trigonometry here. Okay, let's see. What is the next question? Okay, okay. Yeah, let's skip this question. Fifth question. Let's, let's, let's come back to that. Now, let's do this sixth question. You have, uh, you have, uh, you have two minutes time for this. All of you, can you try this? Okay, let's, let's, let's keep it three minutes because you have three questions, three minutes. Then. So uh, I just have one question. Um, do yes, you sir. Substitute the value. Do you substitute the values before or after you um, work out the inverse? What is that? Do you have to substitute the values before or after you put the? No, after, after you work the the, uh, work uh, after you work out the inverse, only then you can substitute this value sixteen. All oh, right. Okay. Thank yeah. You, yeah. Done. Wonderful, Nashan. Done. Good. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, uh, let me explain you yeah. and check if, if my answer is correct or wrong. Okay. So first, uh, f inverse of 16. So you have f of x is equal to 4x plus 16. Right. So uh, y is equal to y. See, I'm, I'm doing a direct step here. y minus 16 over 4 is equal to x. Right. Is that clear? 
So you have f inverse of oh sorry, you have f inverse of x is equal to x minus sixteen over four. So now we are asked to find f inverse of sixteen. So that is zero over four. Sixteen minus sixteen is zero. Zero over four is zero. Am I correct, guys? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Umayra, am yes, I correct? Umayra? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, Adya, am I correct, Adya? Yes. Wonderful. Good. Now, uh, work out next one, f g of x, okay? Now, g, you know already g of x is x squared minus 4, okay? So, you're working out f g of x. f g of x. So, g of x is, you already have, you're given g of x is equal to x square minus 14. So, you'll find f of x square minus 4x, okay? So, that is, you'll substitute in place of x, you'll substitute x square minus 4x, okay? So, you have 4 times x square minus 4x plus 16, right? So, that is 4x square minus 16x plus 16. That's your answer. Am I correct, guys? Is it, uh, does it make sense? Yeah. Alex, yeah. Alex, does yeah. it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Alex? Yes. Yeah, makes sense. Sense. Wonderful. Good. Yeah. Next one is solve the equation f inverse of x is 16 is equal to fg of x. See, f inverse of 16 is 0, right? We just calculated 0. So you have the equation 4x square minus 16x plus 16 is equal to 0. Now, this is a quadratic equation. So can you, 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 can you solve this quadratic equation? You can do that, right? So you'll have uh, x square, my, uh, so you'll divide this by 4. Okay, so you have x square minus 4x my plus 4 is equal to 0. Right? So, which is, uh, uh, okay, so what is, the, what, what is the factors here? Can someone help me with the factors? It's 2 and minus 2. x minus 2 whole square, right? Yeah, sorry, it's minus two minus. X minus yeah. two times and x minus two. And then, then x is gonna be two sub because 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 yes. when you solve it, it's gonna be x equals two, x equals two. So we know that's all gonna be two. Yes. So x equal to two. Did you understand this question, all of you? Yes. If you yeah. if you are able to do this question, you have revised the yeah. entire functions topic. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Good. Let's go to the next question, guys. Here you go. You have f of x equal to 2x plus b. You have g of x is equal to uh, uh, x, over, x over b plus minus 2. And you have g of x equal to x plus c, where b and c are constants. Work out the value of c. You have two minutes time. All of you work it out. I want you all to work out work this. And don't give answers. I'll ask one of you. And some of you are not responding. Please respond, OK? If you don't understand, we'll do it together. No worries. But please respond. Uh, a constant uh, constant is the value that doesn't change. Uh, it, uh, I mean, B and C are not variables. Basically, the vari variables are those values that changes based on the situation. Constants is uh, they are, they, are, they don't change depending on any situation. Their value is a constant value. Yes, Abdul Ahmed, you raise your hand. Okay, shall we go ahead and do it together? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, we can work it. Yes, mm -hmm. wonderful. So you're given f of x equal to 2x plus b, okay, and you're given g of x equal to x over x over b minus 2. And you're also given f g of x equal to x plus c, okay? Uh, f g of x is equal to, uh, sorry, f g of x equal to x plus c. Okay. Now, uh, you're asked to find the value of c, where b and c are constants. Okay. Uh, so, let's calculate f g of x. Okay. And equate it to x plus c. Okay. Now, f g of x would be, look here. f g of x would be, g of x is x over b minus 2, right? So, f of x over b minus 2. Is it clear? Now, yes. Uh, so f of x over b minus 2 is you replace this x f function in x in x in f function with x over b minus 2. 
so you have two times x over b minus 2 plus b right so that is 2x over b minus 4 plus b right guys so uh, see uh, I'm, I'm, I'm multiplying this okay 2x over b minus 4 plus b okay so if you simplify this you have uh, I mean, let's not simplify. Let's keep it this way. Now, this is equal to your given fg of x is x plus c. Okay, so two x over b minus four plus b is equal to x plus c. Okay, so you're asked to work out the value for c, value of c. Okay, so let's solve it for c basically. Okay, uh, so two x uh, c is equal to two x over b minus x minus plus 4 minus b uh, plus b right you see that so um, no. if you simplify, Wait, if you so simplify, why is it plus 4 is it shouldn't it be minus 4 no i'm taking this x to the other side that's it yes no no what it should remain minus 4 okay it should be yeah. minus 4 yeah yeah you're correct yes you're correct it should be minus 4 okay so then you have uh, 2x 2x i mean let's simplify this okay uh, the Denominator is b, so you have 2x minus bx minus 4b plus b square. Okay, so if you simply you can leave it that way. So I've got the same answer as this as you're working through. Okay, okay. B square uh, c is equal to b square. Uh, if you can simplify it, minus 4b uh, and then 2x minus bx plus 2x minus bx over b. Okay, you can leave it that way. Okay. So can you take the x out from the two x minus b x and like do just like x bracket two minus b? Yes, you can do that. Yes, you can do that. So yes. what I do understand is why it became a denominator from two x. Why 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 are we timesing x with b? Because see, you have two x over b here, right? You have two yes. x over b here. So yes. to make it a denominator to be common. Uh, so this is one over one over one over one. So you're multiplying since to have a denominator, common denominator, you're multiplying each term with b. Okay, yeah. And so then over here, you said b squared minus four yeah, b plus. Is that two x? Why is that? Isn't that just what you wrote b exactly just down here? B squared minus four b plus two x minus b x. You see. And is that how you leave the answer? Yes, you can leave the answer like this, or you can write this like someone said already. You can take x common here and two minus b over b. You can you can also do this? Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, okay. good. But let's go to the next question, guys. Yeah, here you go. H is a function uh, such that h of x equal to x plus two. If h of x square is equal to h inverse of x square show that x square plus one equal to zero okay let's skip this okay let's skip this take a lot of time now uh, let's come to trigonometry okay let's 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 come to these questions later now uh, when before we are done we have done a lot of three uh, functions let's come to trigonometry now when it comes to trigonometry okay now here you should understand this okay uh, trigonometry is a greek word okay this is a greek word which means uh, uh, you have a three three words here. Tri plus gonia. It's a combination of three words. Tri plus gonia plus metron. Okay, which is three. Tri is three. Angle gonia is angle, and measure metron is measure. So basically, it is to do with the three angle measures. Okay, it is to do with the uh, uh, three angles. Okay, so which polygon has three angles? It is always triangle. Okay, so in trigonometry. Uh, it, uh, the definition of trigonometry when you talk about trigonometry, what is trigonometry? Trigonometry is a relationship between angles and sides of a triangle. Okay. Trigonometry is a relationship between angles and sides of a uh, triangle. Okay. In trigonometry, uh, I mean, you have six trigonometry, uh, basically six trigonometric functions, but uh, at GCSE level, you'll only study about three. Uh, where you, I, I think you you know this uh, acronym, all of you. So, ka towa. Do you know all of you this one? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where, is, where S uh, stands for sine. Sine is equal to 
uh, if you take okay if you take a, uh, if you take a, a right angle triangle if you take a right angle triangle uh, you see if this is a if this is b and c and let's assume rahul is standing here and watching ishan no no and watching daniel okay daniel is standing on the top of a tower okay so rahul is standing at point c and watching daniel standing on the top of a tower okay so now this becomes opposite side right and this becomes adjacent side and this becomes hypotenuse now understand here this is not always the same for example if daniel is watching uh, daniel is watching rahul then this becomes uh, with an angle theta you understand this becomes opposite side and this becomes adjacent side make sense yeah. opposite yes. side is opposite side and adjacent side depends on the observer okay where observer is standing it depends on where the observer is observing from okay so uh, for example for, for now let's assume uh, rahul is standing at point c and watching daniel on on the top of tower ba okay so this is opposite side and this is adjacent side so sin is opposite over hypotenuse okay and cos is adjacent over hypotenuse okay and tan is opposite over adjacent right make sense yes okay so uh, yes. Uh, this is one aspect of trigonometry next is you have uh, you have uh, a bit uh, trigonometry exact values trigonometric exact values so uh, you 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 have sine uh, 0 degrees 30 degrees 45 degrees 60 degrees and 90 degrees i want you all to do this exercise sine 0 is 0 sin 30 is 1 over 2 sin 45 is 1 over root 2 sin 60 is root 3 over 2 and sin 90 is 1 can you all take a minute and memorize this please sin 0 sin 0 degrees is 0 sin 30 degrees is 1 over 2 sin 45 degrees is 1 over root 2 sin 60 is root 3 over 2 sin 90 is 1 So you have to memorize this for the exam. Surely we can just put it in our calculator and get that. Well, sir, will we ever get yes. to look at something like sine hundred eighty, sine two seventy? Because if there was something like that comes in our exam. Hmm. See, usually, uh, 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 you can. You are allowed to use the calculators, so you can uh, use calculator. But these are trigonometry exact values. so maybe you need to memorize these values but if if it is other than these values you can use your calculator oh well i'm thinking based on a non calculator point of view if someone had like a situation where it says like sin 180 okay. and it's a non calculator exam okay uh, that's a huge uh, i mean uh, i mean I, i'm limited in the, i'm limited by time in this class but then see you have a quadrant axis so 0 to 90 degrees all trigonometric functions are positive and 90 to 180 degrees uh sin and the cosine are sin is positive 180 to 270 degrees uh tan is positive and 270 to 360 degrees cos is positive now based on this if you are asked sin 270 degrees for example sin 270 degrees uh, uh since uh, since it is it is coming in the under the third quadrant or it is going under four, in fourth quadrant uh cos is negative okay so sin is positive so side is sin 180 plus uh, 90 right 270 so in in third it is coming in the third quad, uh, quadrant so it, it is tan is only positive so it is sin 90 so sin 90 is 1 basically so uh, i mean I, i don't know who is asking this it's me so asking this is is rahul okay rahul i mean we are limited by time i mean i am not a, i mean i i don't think i'll be able to uh, be able to deal with this question now okay sir i get it's a huge it's a it's a it's a long lengthy topic okay i understand okay. your question but it takes a lot of time yep i get it sir yeah thank you
are you done with sine values now let's come to the cosine values okay cos values cos values you do from left right to left okay uh, whatever it is right to left okay 1 root 3 over 2 1 over root 2 1 over 2 and 0 okay so if you remember sine values cos values will be just uh, sine 60 and cos 30 will be same you see sine 60 Cos 30, sin 30, cos 60, and sin 45, cos 45, same. Sin 90, cos 0 will be sin 90, and sin cos 90 will be sin 0. Okay, so it is just from right to left. If you write, you get cos values. You see that all of you? Yes, makes sense. Makes sense. Yes, makes sense. Okay, now. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Okay, and then tan. Now tan values will be tan is sine over cos. Look here, tan is sine over cos. So zero over one is zero. One over two over root three over two is one over two. One over root three, and this is one over two over one over two is one, and this is root three, and this is infinite value. Okay, so. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So for, for once again, Sokatova. Uh, Sokatova. Uh, see, these are trigonometric functions. Understand this. Sokatova is a trigonometric functions. Three trigonometric functions: sine, cos, and tan. Sine means opposite over hypotenuse. In a in a in a in a, in a right angle triangle, opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent side over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite side over adjacent side. Okay. Uh, Oliver, I, I mean, uh, yeah. Hope you hope you understand that. And then you have these trigonometric values. And the next thing we're going to look at is uh, you have sine rule and cosine rule. Okay, sine rule. Now, in a in any in any uh, triangle, for example, if you draw a triangle, you have A, B, C. Okay, three sides. Now, if this angle is if this side is small a, this side will be small b, and this is small c. Okay, so you have sine a, a. Is equal to sine b by b. Okay, is equal to sine c by c. Okay, now this is sine rule. Okay, sine rule is sine a by a is equal to sine b by b is equal to sine c by c. Now this will help you. Uh, I mean, you have trigonometric functions to solve any missing side in a in a right angle triangle. But when it comes to other triangles, if you have to find missing side or angle, okay, then this rule will be useful. Okay, sine a by a is equal to sine b by b is equal to sine c by c. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Next is cosine rule. Cosine rule again for the same. If for any triangle, you I mean you will have to memorize these rules. Uh, a square is equal to b square plus c square minus two b c cos a. Okay. This is cosine rule. So, for example, yes, go ahead. If we're replacing a squared with b squared, would it not just be b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared minus two b a cos? No, b. a squared plus c squared. See, you have a b c, right? So b squared yeah. is equal to a squared plus c squared minus two a c cos b. Cos b. Okay, yes. so you just swap. The cause yeah. and so yeah okay perfect yeah it is cyclic basically makes sense yeah yes yeah. okay good so these are these yeah, are yeah, what yeah. you what you will do in trigonometry yeah. basically uh, you'll you'll do sokatova and then exact values and sine rule and cosine rule okay so you'll have to practice this we'll do some questions based on this okay sir so you yes go ahead. You have this question. Can you can you do this? Uh, sine uh, both mean the same. Sine S I N E or S I N means the same. Okay. Uh, in trigonometry, sometimes you write it as S I N E sine, or you write it as sine theta S I N sine theta. It's not sin, by the way. Understand that it is sine theta. Okay. It's not sin theta. Yeah. Now, can you can you read this question? A ladder is placed against a wall. For the ladder to not fall, it should be placed at an angle between seventy degrees and eighty degrees with the ground. Is the ladder is the given ladder safe? Calculate the length of the ladder. You have two minutes time. Uh, 
I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Good, good, guys. Good, Rahul. Okay, wonderful. Now, uh, let's do it for those who, are, uh, who have not done it. Let's do it together. Okay? Oh, what is this? Okay. Here you go. A letter is placed against a wall. For the letter to not fall off, it should be placed at an angle 70 degrees and 80 degrees with the ground. Now, let's find the angle. Okay? The ladder should be placed. This ladder should be placed. This is ground. By the way, this is ground. Okay, it should be placed between 70 degrees and 80 degrees with the ground. So you need to find this angle. Okay, so you are given this is opposite side and this is adjacent side, right? Understand this. So which trigonometry you have Soka Towa? Always write this Soka Towa. Now this is Towa, right? Uh, it is a relationship between opposite and adjacent. So Towa. So tan theta is equal to opposite, that is 5.8 over adjacent that is 1.5 so theta is equal to tan inverse uh, 5.8 over 1.5 so let's use calculator and do this okay uh, can you see the calculator on my screen no 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 okay let me no. just check let me just check just a minute now can you see my calculator yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. So 5.8 over 1.5, right? Is uh, this one? Okay. Now I'm finding tan inverse of this. Tan inverse of 3.8666 is 75. Point, it is oh 75.49. So let me write 75. 79.5. Okay. 75.5. Now, this is the angle, okay? This angle now is 75.5 degrees, okay? Now, the angle to, the, for the ladder to not fall off, it should be between 70 and 80 degrees. 75.5 is between 70 and 80 degrees. So, therefore, the ladder is safe, okay? It is safe, okay? Because it is between that, 75 and 80. Now, calculate the length of the ladder. You're asked to calculate this length of the ladder. Now, you can use Pythagoras theorem here. Understand this, this is a right angle triangle, okay? Now, you can use Pythagorean theorem. What is Pythagorean theorem? A, C, let's, let's name this, okay, A, B, C. A squared plus B squared squared equals C squared. Squared. C squared. Yes. So you can use 5.8 square plus 1.5 square will give you the square root of this, will give you the length of the ladder, okay? So if you, if you see this, it is 5.9908. Okay, 5.8 square is... It's square root of 5.89. Okay, good. 1.5 square is 2.25 plus 33.64. You have 35.89. Square root of it is 5.99, which is 6, right? Rounded off, it is 6 meters is the length of the ladder. Make sense? Yes, sir. Uh, others, everyone? Yes. I see only yes, people speaking. Arav, does it make sense, Arav? Sir. Yes, uh, Sahiba, does that make sense? Sahiba, yeah. wonderful Sahiba. Uh, Patel, sir. Oh, Patel, yes, yes, someone is asking a question. Okay, yeah, sir, yeah. Um, sorry, just to go back, not to, to just say to like trigonometry and stuff. Um, you know, when it's not a right angle triangle, you have the sine and cosine rule. How do you know which one to use at this specific time? Because let's say you have like not in this question, but like I think I've seen like other questions where mm -hmm. you have to find the angle or find the length of this, but you don't know whether you're supposed to use cosine or sine. Or, okay, that's what. See, uh, yeah. a good question. Uh, uh, I mean, now see, I have opposite. I, I'm given opposite to I and adjacent side, right? So I'm given yes. here opposite and adjacent. So therefore, I don't. I can't use sine or cos, cos here. I I have to use tan. Yeah, no, no, but this is the, I know that, but I'm talking about, you know, like, if, you know, when you just explained to us about, like, the cosine rule in the thing above, in, like, uh -huh. on page 16 of the, okay. yeah, when you explained that to us, um, you know, when they give you a question similar to this question, but it's not a right-angle triangle, 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you say, okay, find the length of this. Mm-hmm. How would you, how would you know which way to go about? How do you know that you're going to be using cosine or sine? Okay. Yes. We'll. I mean, I'll. I'll come back to that. Uh, uh, I'll. I'll. When. When we're using sine and cosine rule, I'll. I'll do that. Okay. Just give me ten or fifteen minutes, because uh, when we come to that, I'll explain you. I understand your question. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Uh, if uh, zero to ninety sine a is equal to zero point four, then is cos a zero point five possible? Uh, co- uh, means zero point five is one over two. Uh, yes, in zero to ninety degrees, uh, cos value you 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 just uh, learn trigonometry exact values, right? Cos sixty is one over two, right? So it is possible. Okay, next. Yeah, can you try this? The diagram represents a land uh, ladder la- landing on the top of a wall P with height seventy four meters, making an angle of elevation thirty degrees. Find the length of the ladder. Can you do that? Yes, okay. Now the, uh, let's do it together. The Diag- diagram represents a ladder landing on the top of a wall P with height seventy-four meters and making an angle of elevation. To find the length of the ladder. So now uh, you're asked to find AP. Okay, this height. Now uh, see, uh, look here. Your this is opposite side because this is the angle given. So this is adjacent side, and this is hypotenuse. So, which trigonometric function you will use? You are given opposite side, and you need hypotenuse. So, among so ka towa, which one will you use? Sine. Sine, right? Good, wonderful. So, sine thirty is equal to seventy four over AP, right? Hypotenuse. Okay. So, you are asked to find sine thirty is one over two. Okay. So, you have one over two is equal to seventy four over AP. So, AP. That is height of the ladder is equal to seventy four times two, which is four two eight seven two fourteen one forty eight meters. Am I correct, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're correct. Okay, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, did you understand, uh, Mahmud? Did you understand? Nathan, did you understand, Nathan? Yes, sir. Sumi, did you understand, Sumi? Yes. Wonderful, good. Uh, secrets. Uh, Wait, if, uh, yeah. Uh, why did you do uh seventy four divided by the adjacent side? Big. Uh, I mean, I did not do seventy four divided by the adjacent side. It is hypotenuse. Seventy four divided by AP. <clears throat> it's AP. It's not adjacent side. I mean, What's sine it? basically. Because basically, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So opposite is seventy four, and hypotenuse is AP, right? Uh, sorry. Oh yeah. Yeah. See, hypotenuse is AP, right? This is AP. Yeah. AP. Okay. So that's why. Good. Let's go to the next question, guys. In a triangle, okay. Uh, in a triangle ABC. Uh, AB is equal to eight centimeters, okay, and BC is equal to six point two centimeters. Angle BAC is thirty degrees. Find the angle ACB. Okay, you're asked to find this angle. Okay. Now, see, you can use uh, uh, you can use sine rule here. See, you have sine A. By A is equal to sine C by C. Okay. Now look here. Ang- side opposite to angle A would be A, and side opposite to C would be small C, and this is B. Okay. Uh, you understand? Uh, I mean, before who was asking me that question? Uh, I have a question. Say- yes. Go ahead, Avik. Um. Do we just assume that? Uh- Uh, a B uh, angle A B C is a right angle because it doesn't specify. No, I am not using. I mean, there is no right angle here. There is oh. no right angle here. I finished, sir. Good, good, Rahul. This there is no right angle here. I am not assuming right angle. There is. Uh, there oh, is I finished. Avik, did you understand, Avik? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm, 
I am not assuming. That's why I am using sine rule. If the if it was a right angle triangle, I would I I would have used uh, soka tova. Oh, But since okay. it is not a right angle, that's why I am using sine rule. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So now let's 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 substitute these values. Okay, sine a is sine thirty divided by six point two is equal to sine c. You are not given angle c divided by eight. C small c is eight. So you have sine thirty is one over two. So one over two, uh, one over two times uh, the over six point two is equal to sine c over eight. So you have uh, you are asked to find c angle c. So sine c is equal to eight times one over two divided by six point two. So you have uh, four over six point two. So c is equal to now let's use cal c. Uh, you have four over uh, four over six point two is zero point six four five one. So you have sine c is equal to zero point six four five one. So uh, you can find c. You are asked to find c. Okay, uh, c is equal to sine inverse zero point six four five one. So that is zero uh, point sine inverse of this. Okay. So sine inverse of this is forty. C is equal to forty degrees. Okay. So therefore, this angle is forty degrees. You see, makes sense, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, see, uh, the, uh, before I mean, uh, uh, I think it was who was that asking where to use sine rule and cosine rule? I'll type it for you. Okay. Where to use sine rule and I'm cosine rule? Yes. Uh, I think uh, someone asked that question. Let me type. The sine rule is used. Let me type here. The sine rule is used. The sine rule is used uh, when we are given when we are given uh, either either number one uh, a two angles on one side. two angles and one side b uh uh two sides and non included angle okay the two angles and one side or two sides and one non included angle okay maybe if you want to note this down please note this down this will be really helpful now cosine rule is used cosine rule is used uh when we are given when we are given uh number 1 a when we are given three sides three sides and asked to find an angle okay uh and then or b two sides and one included angle uh two sides and an included angle can we go yes. back to the page where uh You wrote about uh, how uh, I forgot. <coughs> It's page fifteen. Okay. Do you mean this one or this one, Jacob? Which which page do you want? Fifteen. Okay, fifteen. Okay, these values. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, you want to stay on that page? You want me to stay on that page? No, no, no. I've already got it. Okay. Now, can you can you uh, did you understand this? Uh, I omit. I think it is you who asked this question. Hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. Um. Yeah. It was very good. Um. Your you you pronounce my name as I omit. Okay. Yeah. Uh. So basically, the sign rule is used. But, but Yeah, but I'm, I I I like the um um it's very useful to what you've written. Okay, good. Yeah, the sine rule is used when we are given either two angles in one side or two sides in one angle. Cosine rule is used when we are given three sides or two sides and an included angle. Okay, good. Next uh, question. Let's go to right. yeah. Go ahead. Um, do you mind writing what um tan um tan rule is used for? There's no tan rule. It is sine rule and cosine rule only. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 
good let's go to the next question guys here you go now you are given three angles and you are asked to three angles on one side and you are asked to find the side zy zy basically you are asked to find this side so see uh, this is you need to write the cosine you you will be using cosine rule here basically uh, so uh, see uh, or else see this is let's name this instead of let's uh, to avoid confusion let's name this abc okay so this is a so you have to find a okay you are given c okay so you can use no, sine rule here cosine rule no you you can use sine rule right so okay. you can say sin a by a is equal to sin c by c okay so sin a is 84 sin 84 degrees divided by a is equal to sin c so you said that sin, so you said you use sine rule when you have two pairs of angles no you if you feel have three as three sides and two sides and then an included angle you see cosine rule you said two angles on side okay two sides okay yeah okay, okay. yeah so sin c yes. over uh, so sin 48 over 14.6 now if you you have to solve this for a you have to solve this for a okay so uh, now you have a is equal to sin 84 times 14.6 divided by sin 48 so let's do this calculation okay uh, so now sin okay 84 uh, sin sin 84 times uh, 14.6 is equal to this one divided by uh, 48 uh, uh sin okay is equal to 19.5 okay so therefore a is 19.5 cm you see that um, yes, i did a different way yeah i did okay. different way as well but same thing yes. same answer yes yeah same uh, uh yeah go ahead can you explain us what you did omaira Um, I did fourteen point six divided by sin forty eight, and then I times that by sin eighty four. Fourteen point eight six. Fourteen point six divided by sin forty eight. No, 48. you can't. You can't do that, right? Sin eighty four times fourteen point six divided by sin forty eight should be your answer. Wait, but uh, I did. I'm pretty sure I got did same thing as I just did. A over sin eighty four equals fourteen point six over sin forty eight. So then yes, I did fourteen point six. Yeah. Okay. Fourteen point okay. six divided by seven forty eight times sine eighty four, which is nineteen point five. Yeah. Okay. 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 Basically, you are inverting both of them. So sine a by a is equal to sine c by c. You can also write a by sine a is equal to c by sine c. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Good. Well, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Nisha. Um. Why does sine forty eight go to the denominator? Yes. Yeah. Uh, even yesterday we learned about this, right? When you have A over uh, let me change the color. Okay, A over B is equal to C over D. Then you have AD is equal to BC, right? Yeah. So sine eighty four times fourteen point six is equal to A times sine forty eight. So A is equal to sine eighty four times fourteen point six divided by sine forty eight, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Next, let's go to the next question. Okay, let's skip this. Uh, let's skip this and go to the other question. Let's see. Okay, go ahead. Can you read this? The right the area of a triangle PQR is sixteen centimeters square. Okay, the length of the side PQ. Okay, uh, the Q is missing here. Here is Q. The length of side PQ is fourteen centimeters and QR is seven centimeters. Given that the side PR is the longest. Okay, find the measure of angle PQR. You are asked to find this angle. How do you do that? Let's use. Okay, the, uh, let's name this ABC to avoid confusion of our formulas. So this is B, this is A, and this is C. Okay, so let's use cosine rule for this. B square is equal to C square plus A square 
minus 2 AC cos B. Right, that's the cosine rule. Okay, so you have B square is you are not given B square here. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, so, so wouldn't, wouldn't you have to work out using the area? Wouldn't you have to work out the last side? Would you not, would you not do half a b sine c because it's given us the area of the thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, yes. I I mean I should have given you that formula as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, look here. Uh, for finding the area of triangle, uh, of the triangle here, if I I I'll write here, area of triangle is half. I mean we all know area of triangle when base and height is given is half base times height. Uh, but in case of if you're not given height, you can use this. Okay, area of triangle is equal to half AB sine C. Am I correct? Is it correct formula? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so, this yeah. is the correct formula, sir. Yes. So you will be using this formula here. Okay. Uh, so basically, this question. Uh, where is that question? Oh. Just a minute. You are doing question number. Okay, here. So you will uh, you'll use that. Your given area of triangle is 16 centimeters square. Okay. Uh, so it is uh, your given 16 centimeters square. So half AB sine C is equal to 16. Okay. So uh, in this case, uh, you will find the angle, okay? So you're given a uh, half AB uh, is 14 times 7 times sine theta is equal to 16, okay? So you will write uh, 14 times 7, so first 28, 98 sine theta is equal to 16 times 2, that is 32, right? This 2 goes to the answer. So sine theta is equal to 32 over 98. So uh, you'll use, you want theta, okay? Theta is equal to sine inverse 32 over 98. Okay? So you will calculate this, okay? So 32 over 98. 32 divided by 98. And then sine inverse. What not you have 98? That's what I was you thinking. Can do you can do that, but I've taken it to the other side. That's okay. fine. You can do that here as well. So 19, point, uh, 19 degrees, okay? Basically, theta is 19 degrees, okay? So the angle theta is 19 degrees. Is it correct? Am I correct, guys? Yes, you're yep. correct, sir. Thank but you. Yeah, all. you're correct. So you need to remember this formula. Okay, we, are, we, are, we already know that area of triangle is half base time side, but uh, when it comes to angles, uh, you should remember this formula, half A, B, sine C. Okay? Good. So let's go to the next question. Okay. Now, you should calculate the area of this triangle. And the triangle is enlarged by scale factor of 3. Calculate the area of enlarged triangle. Can you do that now? You have two minutes time. One of you should explain. Let's, I mean, I, I'll ask one of you. Mahmoud, uh, can you hear me now, Mahmoud? Oh, okay, thank you. I want Twisha to explain us this. Twisha. Are you here, Twisha? Hello, Twisha, can you can you hear me? Ramesh, can you hear me? Yes, Twisha, go ahead. Twisha, I can't hear you. I can explain it. Who is that? Yeah, Twisha. Go ahead. Is it Twisha? I said. Oh, I, I am. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Let others finish.
Okay, uh, let's do it. Yes, go ahead. I, I mean, what is your uh, yes? Go ahead. Area of triangle ABC. The formula is half AB sin yeah, C. Okay, so yeah, so but um, since we only have, I think we have we have C and we have A, so would it not be half AC sine B, which is eleven point seven? Um, times sine eleven times seven times sine seventy five to get thirty seven point thirty seven point to to, to, what is two, that? to one decimal to one decimal place. Well, it's like one eight eight one four four three one. Yeah, so it is to one decimal. Yeah. So is it correct, guys? Is it correct? Yeah. Is that yes, Jacob? Yes. Jacob? Is yes. That Jacob? Okay. Ananya, what do you think, Ananya? Is he correct? Uh, yeah, he's correct, sir. Okay. Umaira? Yes, sir. Okay. Wonderful. Layana? Sir, so shouldn't it be in centimeters squared because it's the area? What is that? Shouldn't it be in centimeters squared because it's the yes, area? It is centimeters squared, yes. Correct. Next, the triangle is enlarged by scale scale factor of three. Now, what would be the area of this triangle, enlarged triangle? I'm sorry, would, would you? you... Half... Go ahead, go ahead. So would it be half times 21 because this enlarged by scale factor of three, so it's seven times three, 21 times 33 times by sine 75. Okay. And to one DP, um, I've equated 334.7 centimeters squared. 34.7 centimeters squared. Is it correct? Could also, yeah, but could you also just multiply the area you got before times nine because the square, the scale factor is three and it's area, so you square it. Okay, so you get, you're saying 37.2 times uh, nine, right? Yeah. <laughs> because I've got the same answer. Yes. Good, good, good guys. Good guys. Wonderful. Excellent. Next, calculate, uh, shown below is a parallelogram, calculates its area. What is the area of parallelogram? It is base times height, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So uh, you know the base. You know the base. You'll have to find the height. Mm -hmm. But sir, could you just um uh do split it in like half, do like uh -huh. little uh -huh. diagonal, uh -huh. and then you know, because both are um like adjacent. Sorry, not adjacent. Like opposite angles are the same. So the the one over there is fifty as well. So you can find out the area. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Can you just do half a oh. um, half a b yes. sine yes. a and then that times two? Good. Go ahead. Good. Good. I'm done. Good. What's your and who is that? Um, Adia, I've got 122 points. Adia, you got 122 point? Six. Six. Centimeter square. Meter square, sorry, it is meter square. Hmm. Yes. Is she correct? Nazma? Uh, Nazma, is she correct, Nazma? 1.5. Hey guys. Triangle is a triangle is a half half times base. Wait, so shouldn't it be um sixty? Shouldn't it be sixty one point three because it's got two shapes? <laughs> yeah, I think I multiplied it by two twice, but one hundred and twenty two point six divided by two is sixty one point three. I got 
Okay, let's see. Uh, sine 50 degrees. And then you have sine 50 times 20 is 15.32 times. No, it's not 80 divided by 2 is 40, right? Uh, it's not 20 times 2 is 30.6 times 2 again is 61.2. So your, your, your answer should be 61.2 meter square, right? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Good. We skipped one question somewhere. Uh, let's try that today. Uh, not this one. Okay. Where is that? We skipped one question. We said we'll do it. We'll come back to it later. Okay, let's try this. If 4 times sin x 60 minus x times sin 30 degrees plus tan 45 is equal to root sub 50 sin 90 degrees, find the value of x. Uh, so you have two minutes time. Go ahead, guys. I'll ask one of you, okay? I'll ask those who are not responding. Joel uh, and Daniel, I, uh, one of you. Daniel, I want you to try this, Daniel. Joel. These are to do with exact values, okay? Two. <coughs> Faiza, are you here, Faiza? Yes, sir, I'm here. Christiana and Kushal, Ria. Christiana, Kushal, Ria, are you here? Yes, sir. Does the answer have to be positive? I'm here, sir. Uh, uh, yes, I think so. I mean, yes, let's check. See, uh, let's do it together. Four times sine 60 is root 3 over 2. Okay. Minus x times sine 30 is 1 over 2 plus tan 45 is 1 is equal to root 50 times sine 90 is 1. one so it's just going to be 50, no? Yes. So 2 goes 2 times 2 root 3 minus 1 over 2 plus 3 over 2, right? Uh, uh, 3 over 2 x. Okay, 3 over 2 x is equal to root 50 is 5 root 2, right? 25, 2 is 50, 5 root 2. Am I correct? Yes. Is step clear? Daniel? Uh, yeah. Daniel is, yes, Daniel. Good. Christiana? Is step clear, Christiana? If you are not audible, you can just raise your hand. In, I mean... Can you show me Kushal? Are we? Yes. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. So now you are asked to solve for x. Find the value of x. Okay. So you, you uh, two root three minus five root two is equal to three x over two, right? So now you can write it as x is equal to two over three times two root three minus five root two. That's that can be your answer. Okay. 2 times 2 root 3 minus 5 root 2 divided by 3. Is it correct? Ria, am I correct, Ria? Is it correct, guys? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yes. Good. <coughs> so that's the value of x. Wonderful. Yeah. Good. Good, guys. Uh, see, uh, what we have learned today, basically, we started with functions, okay? And we started with functions. And uh, we uh, we found uh, uh, we found uh, I mean uh, we found how to do uh, I mean uh, how to calculate f of one f of two f of three and then we went to composite functions where we found f g of something g f f of something for example let me give you one question okay uh, uh, if you have f of x equal to three x over four three x plus four and g of x is equal to 
2 x minus 3 2 x minus 3 that is okay 3 x plus 4 2 x minus 3 find uh, find f g of x number one and second one g f of x and can you do that and what do you notice can you check what what we, what do you notice vikasni can you please uh, check vikasni find f g of x and g f of x Yes, same. I'm done. Okay. Done. Good. What do you notice, uh, guys? Are they equal or not equal? They're not equal. Actually, They're not equal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not equal. of x is 2x minus 3. So f of 2x minus 3 is 3 times 2x minus 3 plus 4. So that is 6x minus 9 plus 4 which is 6x minus 5, right? So 6x yeah. minus 5. This is fg of x. Now g of x, g of f of x is yeah. 3x plus 4. So that is 2 times 3x plus 4 minus 3. So that is 6x plus 8 minus 3, 6x plus 5. You see? Right? So they are not equal. You got 6x minus 5 here. Right? And here you got 6x plus 5. Right? Did you get right. the same thing? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Rishan, are you here, Rishan? Okay. So they are not equal. Okay. Basically, f g of x. And then we also learned uh, how to find the inverse of a function. Uh, we, did, we did that. And then we came to trigonometry. We have learned what is Soka Tova. Okay. And the Soka Tova is used when you have a right angle triangle. But when it is not a right angle triangle, you either use a sine rule or a cosine rule. And I've also given a, uh, given information where to use sine rule and cosine rule. Okay, sine rule is used when you have two angles in one side or two sides and one non-included angle. Cosine rule is used when we are given three sides and two sides and, in, and an including angle. Okay, included angle we use cosine rule. And you know Pythagoras theorem, right? Uh, Pythagoras theorem is c square is equal to a square plus b square. And then we also learned uh, I mean exact values, trigonometric exact values. Uh, it, this is very important to know trigonometric exact values because uh, you cannot use calculator. For example, if you use calculator, for example, see, let's see sine 60 degrees, okay, using calculator. You get like this, see, 60 degrees sine, okay, sine 60 is 0 0.866, but he, the answer should be in the form of a third like this, root 3 over 2. So you cannot use calculator. So, so you will sorry. have to memorize these values. And I told you easy method to memorize these values is first memorize sine values and cosine values will be uh, from right to left. If you write uh, the sine values, it will be cosine values and tan value is sine over cosine. So if you memorize that, uh, you'll be able to do uh, these trigonometric values. Hope you guys enjoyed today's class. Did you? Thank you. Thank you. It was very useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Tomorrow we are going to have another Sorry. class. Uh, it will be more exciting than thank this. You, yes, yes. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. God thank you. you. Bye. God bless you. God bless you. Bye. See you. Same to you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. God bless you.